Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Hey, 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 good evening, Facebook family, and welcome to another episode of Post Daily Dose with me, your trusted parenting advisor, faithful guide, and servant on the healing journey. What's my name, Big Papa Brian Post? Hope everyone is doing fantastic on this amazing, terrific, tremendous Thursday. Yes, where I'm at. That's right, I am in the bedroom, laying across the bed. It is a little after 4 30 here in. Uh, Crescent City. Missed you guys yesterday. Um, not because I was particularly tied up, but because um, Facebook wasn't allowing me to post anything live yesterday. I tried and I tried and I finally told Christy, I said, hey, um, can't get live. And uh, so she tried and she wasn't able to. And so she put in a request. And so we don't know. Maybe everyone had some kind of uh, um, issue. But anyway, about 10 minutes ago, me and one of my 17-year-olds, we just got back from a really nice, nice long lunch. We both had a tuna melt, albacore tuna. Oh, so good. We were in Brookings, uh, Oregon in the sunshine, 70 degrees here, so it's amazing. I've been up since eh, a little before 5 this morning, and so we got back here to the house, and I told him, I'm going to take a nap, buddy. Now, you guys might not know, but I am a seasoned power napper i i mean i can take a power nap like nobody's business so i we chit chatted as i was walking up the stairs i closed the door he asked if he could watch tv i said sure keep the volume down i stretched out across the bed where i still am right now ccc and yep you guys know i live in a cabin so this i'm actually in the king size bedroom so uh Hiya there, Ashley D, and hey there, Shaylee. Uh, Shaylee from the UK. That's such a nice, uh, nice spelling. I haven't ever seen it before. That's right. I am a seasoned power napper, Miss Acosta. Um, so I literally laid down. It was uh, about four twenty-five, and what am I supposed to see you guys at four thirty? And guess what I did? I went to sleep. And just woke up at 4.35. 10 minutes. Wide awake. <laughs> I swear I was in a deep sleep. I feel great. I feel, I feel, I feel fantastic. So, hello there, Carrie. And hello there, Margina. So, yeah, I just woke up. I haven't moved. Same position I was just in. And so I figured, eh, I don't feel like getting up and going outside. Uh, or anywhere else, so, and the kids aren't back yet from surfing, so I'm just going to chill right here and chop it up with you guys for a moment. So yesterday, I was really on a tear, and I got to tell you, I, I went and saw my chiropractor again yesterday, I mentioned this the other day, his actually, his name is Sean Gray, so if you're in Crescent City, you're not going to find Dr. Parker, I think I said Sean Parker, I don't know, I was thinking about Spider-Man or something. But uh, his name's Sean Gray. Fantastic. Really enjoying his his care of me so far. The first night, he um, actually called me and and we just wanted to check in and make sure I was doing okay. Who does that? I mean, it's just, that's how I call it, customer delightment. And then he had recommended a, uh, he says, I have the beginning stages of art arteriosclerosis. I have a... a um, a disc in my back that he says is almost all the way gone. And so he, hello there, Amanda. So he suggested that I start taking a supplement called CalMag, and it's a powder. Well, it's a calcium and a magnesium that is made out of coral. And so he said that I can regenerate that disc within 9 to 12 months with the right chiropractic care and taking this CalMag stuff. So I've been taking this CalMag. So when I get when I got ready to purchase it, you guys I know I like to I'm into supplements. So when I got ready to purchase it, I purchased one with melatonin. So the last few nights, the last couple of few nights I've been taking this melatonin one along with all my other supplements. But man, 
When I wake up in the mornings, some of that melatonin keeps makes me drowsy. I mean, I was yawning all morning trying to get going. So I think I'm going to have to go back and get the one that doesn't have melatonin in it. So anyway, I was going to let my neighbor have it on daily dose. I still feel like letting her have it. I just dealing with stressed out adults, you know, is probably one of the things that is, is for me the most challenging. One of the most challenging things that I encounter is not kids. I I can deal with kids all day long, but stressed out adults. And my neighbor is a stressed. She has to have had some kind of significant trauma in her life. The woman is just unhappy. So we live on a long driveway and actually I'm upstairs now. You guys are going to have to excuse the room because I got a lot going on, but I'll show you because I want you to get a visual. So let's see. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. So see that long driveway? Well, that's her house right there. And her name is Julie. And Julie is unhappy. Julie is like Mrs. Kravitz. And if you were, you know, rocking it, if you were born in the 50s and 60s and 70s, you know Miss Kravitz because she was on the, I think she was on the Bewitched show and she was the, the cranky old old neighbor who was always, always scowling and peering at someone. So Julie takes it up on herself to think that she is the local enforcer of the driveway. So she complains nonstop about the speed on the driveway. Then she complained because the kids, we have a lot of kids. She's like, it's like she's, she sends this to the landlord. Not the landlord, but the, the, um, the, um, what's the lady that, the property manager. Send it to the property manager who then sent it to me. And I'm like, you know what? That woman, needs to get a life. If she had a life, she wouldn't go peering and scowling. Yeah, I have a lot of staff that come here and we have a lot of kids. But do you realize with all the kids that we have in this home and and coming in and out of this home, because this is like our main, this is both my home and my office. So we like, this is our main central headquarters. So kids are always around. We've never torn up a single thing. Not a single thing has ever been torn up. The yard is maintained. You know, the staff. Julie wants us to drive five miles per hour down the driveway. Do you know how slow five miles per hour down the driveway is? I mean, at eight miles per hour, you're just, you're not even on the gas. And it's a long little driveway. She wants us to drive five. And I'm like, this woman needs to get her life. So anyway, property manager texted me the other day. Yeah, I like the hall monitor. Texted me, thank you for those 50 stars there, Ashley. I, yeah, maybe I had to take that. Uh, thank you, Anne Marie. I'll take that. Uh, try that power earlier, earlier in the evening. I usually take my supplements right before I go to bed. But yeah, you're right. I'll, I'll try it early in the evening. Um, but yeah, I was like, I, so I told my 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 um, property manager lady. I'm like, you know what? We have been as kind to that woman. We have been as respectful. We have invited her over for dinner. We have several times we have the kids be polite you know it's like we, everyone always waves and she always looks for some something to complain about i'm like woman you have issues that you need to attend to we are serving families we are serving children no one is harming you everything is cool. She was fussing because we have a new kid who came for a visit from out of town. So she's 10 years old and there's, there's mules and she wanted to see the mules. She was fussing about the mules saying the girl scared the mules. Oh, give me a freaking break. I mean, Oh my gosh. So anyway, I really had to regulate myself because I, I'm really a pacifist, but I probably could have chopped her in the throat the other day, but I didn't, didn't say anything. In fact, drove by, gave her a little wave. It wasn't my usual hi, because usually, you know, I'm in a good mood. I'm feeling good. She got the wave. So then I told the more, the, the property owner, don't, you know, don't worry about it, because we're moving. I'm not telling you guys about that just yet. Oh, I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, but not going to tell you about that yet. So anyway, 
when dealing with stressed out adults, you have to, just like with stressed out kids, you have to remember that they probably have their own history and they're living in their own misery and they have their, their own challenges and you just have to breathe and you have to try to be forgiving. You have to try to be understanding. Even when it's us adults with, with each other, we really do have to extend one another the benefit of the doubt. So I'm extending her the benefit of the doubt. I'm leaving it to the good Lord. I'm praying. You know what? Y'all send me some love. I need some love. We're going to take a love. Let's take a love. I need a love donation right now. Hit those hearts. Boom, 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 boom. Send Bob, Big Papa some love. Fill me up. Fill me up. Here it comes. I feel it coming. I feel it coming. Hit the, hit the hearts. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them. Hit them. Here it comes. Ooh. It's coming. I can see them. There they go. Oh, <laughs> warm my heart right up. Thank you so much. Makes me feel so good. Oh, it's just like vibratory hugs all over my system, all over my electrical system. Thank you so much for that. So I'm not going to say whether or not we got that property there, Christy Saul. I'll be sharing details about that soon to come. Thank you guys for the heart donations. Love you so much. So anyway, then the other thought I had that I was going to share with you guys the other day when I couldn't get on is about learning from your mistakes. Had a mom walking a journey with her kiddo and they had an incident and he called me and then she got on the phone and, you know, she's, she was talking about trying, trying, trying. And here's the thing. Sometimes we try too hard. Thank you for all the love, guys. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Sometimes we try too hard. Sometimes we don't realize it's so hard to grasp this concept that when you're walking on eggshells trying to be calm and trying to appear calm, thank you so much, Margina, that it's actually stress. And so in this little scenario, she got in a, uh, she had to set limits with her son or around the television. He got mad. He was leaving. And so he called me. He said, she won't let me leave. She's keeping me held in this living room like a slave. And she just won't even let me leave. And I said, oh, I said, you're, you're trying to leave. What's going on? He said, I'm just trying to go to my room so I can, you know, get away from her. And so I said, well, okay, well, let me talk to your mom. So I get on the phone with, with her. Right. I, I, I set the limit. I, you know, turned off the television because he didn't want it off and he tried to leave and I told him he had to stay because we need to talk about it. Mm. In the midst of stress. So see, this, this is, there's, there are many, many pieces to this. Number one, there's transition. And that just made me, uh, gave me another thought. There's transition. You have to give your children time to make transitions. Okay, you set the limit. Nothing wrong with that. Turn the television off. But you can't set the limit and expect your child to whistle Dixie in reaction to it. When you set the limit, you've got to be willing to give them permission to have to have their feelings about it, to not like it. The important thing is that you maintain the limit. The important thing is that after you set the limit, you don't actually go back on the limit. So moms turn the television off. Fantastic. Child got mad. Fantastic. He wanted to go to his room. That's fantastic. But mom made him stay. Now, where did we just, what did we just move into? We moved into power and control. And what's power and control rooted in? Fear. And we don't even realize it. Mom wanted to talk to him. She said, if you'll just sit down and we'll talk about this for just a minute, then you can go to your room. No, 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 no. Because then you're setting up a control battle, a power battle. Right? So that's probably just going to lead to some escalation. The best thing to do is to let him go to his room. Let him go to... Stop creating these battles with your children that create more stress for yourself when you don't have to. Let him storm to his room. Thank goodness he's out of your hair. We just forget We forget in the midst of stress and fear, we forget these kind of things. Your kids storm off through the room, storm off down the hall, screaming, talking back, meh, 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 slam the door, bam! Guess what? Hallelujah! They're now in their room. They're not bugging you anymore. You couldn't be any happier. What more do you want? Now, when do you want to talk to him about it? Wait a while. Let things calm down, settle down, relax. You enjoy now this new quiet time that you just found. It's like this, this unexpected gift of quiet. Enjoy it. 
wait for a while. Let everyone calm down because in that moment you're stressed too. Let everyone calm down. And then go in and have a conversation, maybe even not till the next day have a conversation. Because in stress, our thinking is confused and distorted and our short-term memory is suppressed. In stress, we're not thinking clearly. That's why we do things like don't try to keep our kids from walking away. I had a mom fighting with her, her, she had a teenager, a teenager, got upset. He was going to get on his bike and take off riding, and she grabs his bike and is fighting him not to let him take off on the, let him take off on the bike. Let him go. It's not hurting anything. We create all these fear scenarios in our brain. Our thinking gets confused and distorted. Now, what do you do with that? You learn from it. You learn from it and do something different. Commit to doing something different. There's nothing wrong with screwing up. We all do it. But you commit to doing something different. That's what you do. So remember, it's not about the stress so much as it is about the stress. It's about the repair after the stress. The stress is normal. It's natural. It's a part of it. It's the repair of the stress. It's like I told you guys. Yeah, I've got... How many kids do I have here? I've got five kids. It's just me. I'm a single parent this week with five kids. Three teenagers. Four teenagers and one one little guy. And, (laughs) I, you know, I believe in the power of relationship. I don't believe it. I know the power of relationship. I have a strong relationship with all these kids. So I set limits. I set limits. I'm always containing. Now, I'll have 10 kids over here, and I'm not even engaging. I'm letting kids do kids, and I only interject myself when I need to interject myself. And it's usually just to create some kind of emotional containment. And and one of my little girls, I think I might share this, she looked at me because she's always watching me, and she said, are you mad? And I said, girl, no. I said, y'all don't be stressing me out. I just make you think you do. That's, you know, when I I said, hey, turn the volume down. They turn the volume down. When I said, hey, we don't go up there. They don't go up there. When I say, hey, enough. They stop. Just like yesterday and last night, I was messing around on my computer, sitting over at the kitchen table. They're in the kitchen, five, five of them in the kitchen table. I don't even know what they're doing in there. I think one of them was going to make the, the other one a sandwich or something. And they're just being kids, having a good time. And so there was a glass vase up under the, the little table in the middle of the kitchen. And one of them pulled a chair up. And when she wanted to put her foot up on there, she kicked it and knocked it off. And I heard I was on the phone. I was actually talking to my, my dear sweet Rose Baker. And I said, I just looked at them. And they all went, <gasps> and it got real quiet. And I said, because Rose had just said, how many kids you got over there? And I said, I think about eight. She's like, oh, fuck. And I said, I said, I think I may have one too many. Something just got broke. So let me call you back in just a minute. And uh, so they had already kind of started getting, getting the broom and everything and walking over to see where it was broke. And I just said, out of the kitchen. Out of the kitchen. Didn't matter if they were fixing sandwiches. Didn't matter what they were doing. I said, out of the kitchen. They scattered like little cockroaches. Just scattered. Cleaned up the glass. One of them came back to help me clean up a little more. Um, Apologized. No big deal. And then that was it. And then I think the kid got his sandwich later. So you can set limits. You can create stress. But if you have a relationship, you can repair it relationship allows you to always repair and the repair is what strengthens the relationship. The stress is absolute. You got to be able to repair a relationship. And I've got a, I've got a situation right now with, with several families. They're struggling with their kids and they keep missing cues. And this is hard for me. It's, it's hard for me to figure out quite how to bridge the gap. Because we get so conditioned to doing the same thing over and over and over again. And your kids sometimes require some of the most simple things. Sometimes it's a compliment. A lot of times it's a hug. A lot of times it's a sign of affection. 
Start sowing more positive seeds. Start sowing more positive seeds when they've been negative. And I know your mind, when you're stressed, your mind gets real rigid and inflexible and gets locked in. Start sowing more positive seeds. Make a decision today that you're going to start sowing more positive seeds in the relationship. Try to do that because it is so powerful. The presence of love is so powerful. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Remember, in any given situation, we always have two choices. We can continue to react from the same blueprints of stress, fear, and overwhelm, or we can stop, we can slow down, take three to ten deep breaths, and choose love. And remember, the more your kids escalate, the more you have to de-escalate. The more they go up, the more you go down. A negative physiologic feedback loop cannot grow in the midst of a positive one. You all have the ability to contain negative states. So that's it. I'm going to enjoy this peace and quiet for a little bit. Like I said, a 17 year old downstairs watching TV, chilling, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. God bless. Big Papa loves you.